Uh, a curator is someone who works with artists to put together exhibitions of artwork, makes selections of pieces that fit within a theme or within um, the idea for which the show is being put together. We also work very closely with the collections manager um, and other staff to bring things into the permanent collection of the museum, which is a collecting organization. Typically, an art curator will have um, a background in art history or studio art, um, usually a master's degree or perhaps even a PhD. What I'm standing in front of is a work by the artist Inez Storr, who lives locally in the northern part of the Bay Area. It's a work that the museum acquired after a show that we did of Inez's work in 2003 called Theatrical Realism. She always brings personal narrative into her pieces. And so with this particular piece, she's making commentary both on the objects and items that are important to her and also um, sort of the idea of comfort that they bring to her. There's also a little bit of discussion in the way that she organizes her thoughts and her, her, her work. So for instance, in this particular work, we find um, a quilting fashion. Uh, you can see the stitching between the grids and that is reflective of the title, which is called Home Quilt. You also see within this piece imagery that is used by Inez on a frequent basis, such as this um, vanity mirror. You'll also find beds and um, other sort of objects and items that are close to her and are personal for her. I love the sort of um, nostalgic sense that this piece communicates. I think that there is a personal story that everyone can sort of find within this work. You may recognize an image or you may think it might cause you to think of something that you've experienced and for me that's that's what this piece does. I like that personal aspect and the fact that the work is about Inez but it's also making me think about my own history. This is a work from uh, by Cara Maria who's a local Bay Area artist. This is a print that she made at a local printing press, Smith Anderson Editions, which is located in Palo Alto. The De Sase is lucky to uh, receive the archive from Smith Anderson Editions. So each artist who has a residency there, we receive one of their prints, in, at least one of their prints, into our collection. Cara Maria's work is filled with irony, and uh, she really thinks about how she can draw you in with the surface appearance of her image. In this case, it's with the bright colors and the fun patterns. But then she always has something more weighty that she's talking about within the piece. For instance, this particular image, which is from her Wonderland series, she has these almost snowflake-like forms, but they're actually warplanes that have been assembled into that form. And her hope in this work is to make us think about our sort of cultural, political, social climate that we're in at this moment, and how there's this conflicted feeling that we all have, that there's these moments of happiness and feelings of success, and then these moments of setback and a sadness and despair. Uh, I was drawn into it just as the artist hoped with the can kind of um, candy colors and bright imagery. But for me, artwork interests me that is layered and has these meanings so that you can just kind of keep digging into it and sort of learn and reflect upon what the artist is communicating to you and, and then how that particular work makes you feel. So with Kara, this sort of drawing you in with the beauty and then really revealing something heavier to you is, is really interesting and sort of meaty for me. So the Day Sase um, has actually over 10,000 objects in our collection. We have uh, six main areas of focus, California history, liturgical vestments, decorative arts, works on paper, painting and sculpture, and new media. Our works on paper is our largest area of the collections, over 5,000 objects. For us, um, we've collected since 1955, so we find things are in various different sort of states, and we've recently done a large study to sort of understand where particularly our works of, on paper are within the conservation um, needs. We store everything in flat files. We don't keep them framed. Uh, we are doing our best to address the works that have conservation needs um, as we move along and to take the best care of the works that are currently in a really great state. This is a recently acquired work, so for us, we're lucky that it doesn't have any kind of conservation issues. Conservation is in how we care for the pieces, how we um, if they become torn or they become soiled or there's a problem with it, how we actually restore it to its former state or at least to the best of our ability, um, the way that we care for our work. This is a piece by Don Fritz, who's actually a faculty member in the Department of Art and Art History here at Santa Clara. 
Um, as a university museum, there's a huge emphasis for us on integrated learning, finding new ways to bring students, faculty, classes into the museum to do projects with us. Dawn works in multiple different mediums, um, ceramics, multi or mixed media, painting, and this particular work is from a series that he's working on that talks about um, more deeper issues, childhood, issues of power, gender identity. And the works that are in this series, they're always very, um, they always are very fun, sort of whimsical in the, in the imagery that they're using, but he's using a layered effect. He's actually literally painting and painting over and erasing and creating sort of this layered reference to um, different, different things or whatever that particular piece is talking about. This particular image, it's more about gender identity. You see a, a young girl here in the center, and she's surrounded by all of these objects that are typically female associated, such as bunnies and teacups and jewelry. But it, it's really more about like how do we construct gender identity? What things are we giving to our children or, or you know, creating within their culture and upbringing that create this? Okay.